Hi there, my name is Kobe Kingtrod, and if you're wondering why I'm wearing this strange shirt uh, and it looks like I haven't showered in a few days, it's because I haven't, as I had my top surgery two days ago now. I had my surgery on Tuesday the 11th of August 2020 and it is now Thursday. I am still in recovery. Obviously I made an effort to hide my drain in this video as uh, it is quite bloody and a little bit gross and I'm going to make a separate video all about my drain but in this video I just wanted to talk about the very day of my top surgery so hopefully it answers most of your questions but I might just make a separate Q&A about my whole top surgery experience once I'm a bit more recovered. But right now I just wanted to talk about my experience from start to finish that day. Obviously it's not finished yet as I haven't fully recovered, but I thought that maybe if I talk about my experience um, <clears throat> when going in for surgery, um, that maybe that would help some people feel more comfortable or at least know what to expect. Now, obviously it is different anywhere um, this is my experience coming from going to a private clinic in Norway called Aviva Helse in Oslo. I was able to go home the same day while one of my friends in Germany said that he had to stay in hospital three days after. So obviously it depends on where you are, but I guess most of the experience will be the same. Starting the evening before my surgery, I had to stop eating at 12 a.m. My surgery was at 8. Well, it was scheduled to be at 8 in the morning and I had to fast for 8 hours. Uh, and I also had to wash myself with this antibacterial soap that I got. So I had to wash myself with that the evening before my surgery as well as the morning of my surgery before I went in. I had to take um, these antibiotics. I had to take those an hour before I was scheduled to like meet up at the clinic. So I took my antibiotics after I had my shower with the antibacterial soap on Tuesday morning and I was on my way to surgery to the clinic and I started to feel really really sick. My stomach felt weird and I felt really nauseous and I was carrying this really heavy backpack but luckily my brother was there to carry that for me because the heaviness of the backpack was sort of pressing on my insides and it made me feel really sick. Turns out it was probably the antibiotics. Uh, I mentioned it to my mom when I got home and she was like, yeah, I forgot to mention to you that the antibiotics may make you feel a bit sick. And it was probably also a mixture of that and all the nerves and anxiety that I was experiencing. Once I got to the clinic, things got a little bit better. I felt uh, less sick from the antibiotics as well as more calm in general because I was in this um, professional setting. Like if something had happened to me, on the tube on my way there I wouldn't feel very good but like since I was surrounded by doctors and surgeons and everything if something medically weird happened to me because I was feeling sick then they would have known how to take care of it. So I got there and I gave them like my contract, I gave them uh, all these papers that I had. I had to sign some other things, some corona related things and uh, then I got um, like one deciliter I think it was of water and this little medical cup and those were my pre-medication and I was really really happy for that like tiny bit of water that I got because you're supposed to water fast as well so I was a bit worried that since I felt so sick after the antibiotics that this medical cup of all of these medications would make me feel sick um, but I took them all and I felt fine afterwards. I didn't feel sick at all. So what they told me was to try and press out all that I could um, on the toilet before my surgery and um, then to get changed. After I was done on the toilet, I changed and I took out my piercings. As you can tell, they are not back in, but I'll get back to that later. After I was done changing and I changed into my robe and taken out my piercings and everything, the surgeon came into the changing room and he took some pictures and then he drew on my body where he would make the incisions and everything like that. And after he was done drawing on me, the anesthesiologist came and said hi. And then they took me into the operation room and I had to hold my hands up like this, just more straight, as well as over my head. 
and then they washed me like yellow orangey substance which was just to like clean me obviously um, and it was a bit cold it felt a bit cold on my skin but it was fine and then they told me to lie down on the medical or like the surgical table but it wasn't really a table what I imagine it would be was this like scary thing made of like cold steel but that wasn't what it was like at all it just looked like any other you know where you lie down when you go to your GP for just a general checkup it just it, it was one of those uh, or it looked like one of those and then the anesthesiologist said that I would feel a little little pinch on my arm because they were putting the cannula in uh, and you can still kind of see the hole just there um, right over my my lovely little blood vessel. I didn't feel that poke at all and then she said that she was going to give me some painkillers or some pain reducing medication um, and at that point I just did not feel nervous at all anymore or anxious or anything. I was very very comfortable uh, after getting those painkillers and then she told me that uh, she would give me a dosage of anesthesia but I wouldn't necessarily fall asleep right away. And then they just sort of just kept talking to me. I felt wonderful, like I felt so relaxed and sleepy. It's like when you're four years old and you're lying in like your parents' bed and it's so big and comfy and you're just all like sleepy and cuddly. That's what it felt like. Like they kept talking to me and for some reason I started talking about my favorite childhood pirate called Captain Sabretan, any Norwegians know who that is. Um, and then the anesthesiologist was like, okay, I'll, I'll give you some more anesthesia now. And then I just remembered feeling even more comfortable and tired. And then I slowly woke up. I was awake. Like the reason why I was so scared of anesthesia, part of it at least, was I thought that all lights were on and then just like that, it was black, right? Um, but you really just felt like falling asleep normally, like you just get sleepy and then uh, you wake up in the morning and you don't really remember when you fell asleep, but you remember that you did fall asleep and you had a very comfortable night's sleep. Like it, it was just like that, honestly, just without the dreams. Well, the first thing that I remember when I woke up was that I was shaking a lot. Um, and that is apparently because your body doesn't produce its own body heat uh, when under anesthesia because all your reflexes are kind of just turned off. So I had this um, thing under my blanket pumping in warm air to heat me up. And then I remember them telling me that my brother was there. I remember I was telling them something. And then one of the nurses was like, I, I can't understand what you're saying. Can you repeat that? And then something clicked in my brain. And I was like, oh, I've been under anesthesia. It's time to wake up. And from that moment, I was just very awake. Like it took a moment for my body to catch up. Um, but it kind of felt like when you're drinking and your mind is still very clear, your, but your body is a little bit woozy still. Uh, it sort of felt like that. Apparently though, I was sort of awake before that, but I actually can't remember any of that. My brother just told me afterwards that uh, they had gone into the waiting room and been like, hey, your little brother is awake, but he's asking the nurse a question and then she's trying to respond the best she can but then he asks like the exact same question like a minute later and then he does that over and over again so we're going to give him a few more minutes um i can't remember doing that i can't remember asking the same question also worth mentioning that due to the whole pandemic thing uh to my friends great disappointment and my brother as well no one was allowed except for the nurses and like the surgeon and everything were allowed to come into the room where i was waking up they had to sit in the waiting room uh so no kobe waking up from anesthesia was caught on camera sadly but my friends have seen me drunk so they should be fine right so then i got a drink and some biscuits and then I got some papers with just some tips, or well, not tips, uh, but some papers with information about recovery and things like that. Uh, and the nurse asked me how I was doing. And eventually she got me dressed and she helped me get up and we, we tried to walk back and forth a little bit and I was kind of wobbling like a penguin. I felt pretty much completely normal after anesthesia and I was a bit worried about being sick because when my brother was under anesthesia 
uh, when he woke up, he threw up a lot and it just felt really sick and really woozy and tired the whole day. Um, but I didn't feel nauseous at all. Um, and I really didn't feel ill or unwell at all. I felt normal, but just a little bit tired, but that kind of, um, I got really hyper actually after that. For some reason I was just hyper the rest of the day and then I hit like a low yesterday, my first day of recovery and was in so much pain and I was so tired. But anyway, right after my surgery, I tried to put my piercings back in uh, at the clinic, but I couldn't get them back in. And then um, I just didn't really feel like struggling, standing there and struggling. I just wanted to go home. And then when I got home, I just, I don't know, I didn't try again. And then yesterday I was in so much pain that piercings just kind of weren't on my mind. So I'm, I'm getting new facial piercings. You know, it's it's not that big of a deal and it's absolutely worth it. So I think my surgery started out maybe, well, at least I think I fell asleep from the anesthesia at maybe 8.15 a.m. because everything happened so fast when I got to the clinic and then I think I was awake at maybe 12.30 p.m. And yeah, I was able to go back the home or back home the same day because I live less than two hours away from the clinic. So if something happens, there's not that long of a way there. So that's just kind of my whole surgery experience. Kind of like a story time of how the day went. So it all went really quickly. Um, and I was able to spend the days before with my friends, which was absolutely lovely. And also the night before at my brother's place, because he lives in Oslo. So it's just shorter of a way to the clinic from where he lives and from uh, my parents' house. I just... I have been surrounded by so many amazing people, both in the days before surgery, but also yesterday three of my friends came to take care of me while my parents were at work because I can't um, be left like unsupervised after such an extensive surgery. So they came here yesterday and they we just watched Avatar The Last Airbender, another marathon, and my mom baked us pie and cake and they brought me uh, my favourite chocolate and this lavender incense and they picked me flowers and um, even helped me pull my uh, shorts up at one point because after, after I'd been to the toilet because I couldn't do anything on my own because I was in so much pain. But I feel better today and I've only taken one painkiller today and I got some sleep last night, which is, which is good. So yeah, that's just my experience. Again, everything went really fast. I was really scared of the anesthesia, but I felt so comfortable at the clinic and I just fell asleep really quickly. And the worst part of top surgery was how anxious I was about it before it actually happened. But now after surgery, yeah, I'm in pain, but um, I feel like I'm in safe hands, so I'm not anxious or anything like that. So thank you so much to everyone who has been sending me messages and uh, has been checking it up on me. That really has meant the world to me. And uh, thank you so much for all the positivity sent my way. So yeah, again, leave any questions you may have in the comments. And I'll make some more videos later. Thanks for watching. Stay safe when you drink and do not hurt yourselves. And remember that you are so much more than you can ever realize, seriously. And thank you for all your support. Okay, bye. <sighs> cool transition. I just wanted to say a huge, huge, huge thank you to everyone who donated to my PayPal. This surgery would not have been possible for me now if it hadn't been for your generous donations. So thank you so, 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 so much. Um, if you are fundraising for your surgery, please leave that in the comments so that I can put the link in my description. Thank you so much. Bye.